There are plenty of forum threads around about the best tyre pressure for dirt bikes. You will always get guys loudly saying things like, 10 psi front and rear is the correct pressure. But the truth is way more complicated than that. Let's say 12 psi is a good default position for dirt riding. Going down to 8 psi will be good for the slower riding in soft sand and mud. But the faster sections with tree roots and square edged rocks could mean 15 psi is better to avoid punctures. But if you don't ride those bits fast, you could maybe stay on 12 psi. In fact, 10 psi could work as your KDM 200 is very light. Then again, maybe not because you like your beer and you are overweight. You have good rim locks, which means your tyres won't slip on the rim at low pressures. But your old KDM is fitted with those soft bare rims that do get dented easily in rocky terrain. Also, you are just using the thin stop tubes, not heavy duty ones, so they are prone to pinch punctures. So you can see this air pressure business isn't a case of one size fits all. There are default air pressures that assume an average rider on an average bike with average tyres, etc. For example, in trials riding, this is usually 4 psi in the rear and 5 psi in the front. To get that huge footprint from the tyre and loads of extra traction. And while some will disagree, around 12 psi is the most commonly suggested starting point for both enduro and motocross riding. However, motocross racing can complicate things. Air pressure can increase up to 6 psi in a rear tyre as it warms up in a race. And in enduro events, enduro racers who still use tubes often run 15 psi as they are slamming into obstacles so hard they want to avoid punctures and rim damage. While the top extreme enduro riders use soft mooses for the best traction, but have often ruined their rims by the end of the event by slamming into rocks and tree roots so aggressively. So you can see there are no easy answers to what is the best tyre pressure. Some say the rim clean method is the best one. Just pause to read. Otherwise, I'd say just start with 12 psi, pick a track that is typical for your terrain and start decreasing your air pressure and experimenting. You should notice that traction improves rapidly as pressures drop, as the footprint of your tyres on the ground becomes so much larger. When have you gone too low? Eventually your bike won't handle corners well, as at very low pressures your tyres will start to roll off the rim in hard cornering, and you may get a wallowing feeling at speed. A very clear indication of pressures being too low is the hard hit you will feel when your rims hit rocks and tree roots, which can easily cause punctures, rim damage and broken spokes. If you are a traction junkie, then using mooses or the tubeless setup is a no-brainer. Both of these mean that you will get a huge footprint for traction with far less chances of rim damage or punctures. They do have their drawbacks of course. See this video for a full comparison of mooses, tubeless and tubes. If you are into cross training then tubeless or mooses work a treat. I particularly like the tubeless as I can have ridiculously low air pressures for our slow technical rides and get fantastic grip. Then just up the air pressures for a faster more flowing ride. If you choose to stay with tubes, here are some ways to minimise punctures. Use higher air pressures. Traction will start to suck, but there's always a trade-off between traction and punctures when using tubes. Use good quality heavy duty tubes, or ideally ultra heavy duty tubes. They are heavier, but much less likely to get punctures than those thin stock tubes. Get in the habit of picking good lines in rough terrain and lifting that front wheel over rocks, roots and square edges. The front tyre has much less volume, it is much more vulnerable to pinch punctures where an impact squeezes the tube against the rim. 
When you change your tyres, put a good quality thick rim tape on to minimise the chances of your spoke nipples causing a puncture. Make sure you have rim locks fitted and the good quality metal ones, not the cheap plastic shit. Keep an eye on your tube's valve stem at low pressures. If these valve stems start to lean over, your pressures are too low or your rim locks are poor quality. Don't tighten that nut on your valve stem to the rim, otherwise your tyre could be shifting on the rim, but you will have no warning of the tube moving around. When changing tyres, inspect and clean your rims thoroughly. Use lots of baby powder on the new tubes when installing. Test your tubes before fitting. Occasionally there are manufacturing defects and it's so annoying to find out after installing the tube. Use slime or other types of tube sealant in your tubes. These products can sometimes seal a small puncture and also act as a lubricant that might reduce the chances of a pinch puncture. And what about road riding, adventure riding and dual sports riding? Low air pressures are terrible for road riding and you will want somewhere between 20 to 30 psi depending on the weight of your bike. Adventure and dual sport riding complicate the issue because there will be some road riding involved and other factors come into play besides traction. Longer distances are being covered, so low air pressures also mean increased tyre wear, less fuel economy, and often a lot of extra luggage and possibly an extra person on the bike too. Again, air pressure will be a matter of just experimenting to see what suits. Anyone got further tips or comments? Let us know, we'll add them in here.